you. So it seemed that we'd all got used to the idea that rather than there being a single definitive truth, there are a multiplicity of competing and alternative perspectives. Now, with the rise of fake news and publicizing of blatant lies, we want to reassert the importance of accuracy and truth. Can we call out lies and deception while still allowing for radically different ways of seeing? Is there a difference between truth within a perspective and truth that extends to all perspectives? Or should we simply conclude that postmodernism and relativism were a dangerous mistake? And so here to discuss this, we have a very illustrious and highly, I'm sure, truthful panel. Sasha Golob here is a senior lecturer at the Department of Philosophy at King's College London, specialising in modern European philosophy. And he's also the director of the Centre for Philosophy and Visual Arts. And we have also Wickforce is professor of theoretical philosophy at Stockholm University and a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Building on her work in the space between philosophy of mind, language and epistemology, she published her book Alternative Facts in 2017. Um, and Steve Fuller here is an academic specialising in the field of science and technology studies. And his latest work is entitled Post-Truth, Knowledge as a Power Game. And he's a philosophical defender of post-truth. And we have here at the end Peter Pomrancev, who's a Soviet-born British journalist. And he's a visiting senior fellow at the Institute of Global Affairs at the LSE. And he's co-director there of the ARENA programme, with the stated aim to analyse and counter the root causes of distorted information, polarisation and hate speech. And his latest book is called This Is Not Propaganda, Adventures in the War Against Reality. So that gives you some sense, perhaps, of the multiple perspectives of our panel on this debate. So the question, and I'll pose it first to Sasha Golob, is can we allow for multiple perspectives yet still call out falsehoods and lies? Sasha, thank you. Three minutes on that. Thanks, Joanna. Uh, first off, thanks to everyone for, for coming. So what's interesting about this debate is the way the political and the conceptual bleed into each other, right? So this is a philosophical question. It's also a political question. Um, a nice anecdote that shows that a couple of years ago, I was doing some work with a, a group that supports um, the disabled and uh, particularly disabled refugees. And as you can imagine, their politics is very left wing. And they'd had all these posters made that they put up. Um, they were kind of placards that they'd had made. Um, and they'd had them made about four or five years ago. And one of them said, everyone has their own truth. And they put this up and then they said, well, actually, we're a bit embarrassed about this one now. It sounds kind of rather Trumpian. And so they, they sort of took it down again. But when they'd had that made, that seemed to them an integral part of a sort of leftist political program, that it was about hearing the truth of the disadvantaged, something like that. So this idea of multiple truths of everyone having their own truth, where you place that on the political spectrum may change over time, and it may depend on your other political commitments. So that's, um, we'll hear a lot more about the politics, obviously. On the conceptual side, multiple perspectives are often going to be a useful thing, right? You often have multiple perspectives because they're different parts of one large true story. So suppose you're trying to understand the UK labour market. You've got the perspective of the Bank of England, you've got the perspective of a small business owner, you've got the perspective of a 50-year-old woman in Wokington trying to find work. Okay, they've all got different perspectives. We need all those perspectives because they're all little glimpses of the big story. Having lots of perspectives is perfectly compatible with having a kind of ranking. And it's perfectly compatible with some of them not being very good. It's perfectly compatible with some of them being grossly misleading. So at the moment, I've got a good perspective on you. Okay, I can see you all. Okay? You've got a good perspective on me. Now, if I take these off, my perspective's got a lot worse. I can't see you so well. If I come and sit behind Orsa and peer out from behind the chair, firstly, I'm going to look at an odd guy, but my perspective's going to get even worse, right? And your perspective on me is probably going to get even worse in every sense. So you can have the idea of lots of perspectives, and you can have the idea of a ranking of them. That's quite natural. Something that I think is particularly important in this debate, and the last thing I'll say is, is the idea of debunking views by talking about people's perspectives. So this is when you say, you only think that because, or you just believe that because. So you, know, you only believe in Brexit because you're 
are racist, or you only believe in Brexit because you don't know the arguments, or you only um, believe in social justice because you're a snowflake, or whatever. So these because arguments are basically saying, I'm not going to engage with the views you're putting forward because I think your perspective is driving them. They're not rationally defensible views. It's your perspective that's leading you to, to this position. And so I'm going to debunk you by pointing out that perspective. And these are important in a democracy to have these debunking arguments, but also quite dangerous if you don't use them carefully because they effectively say we're not going to engage with the argument of this group. And it's going to lead very often to that group becoming radically alienated because it's going to think its arguments aren't being heard. It's just being dismissed as a snowflake, as a white guy, as a racist or whatever. And that group is going to become radically quite unhappy quite quickly. So multiple perspectives, often a good thing. You can rank them. And be careful of these debunking arguments. You only believe it because just you just think that because of your race, your gender, whatever. Those are often going to be important, but they're also often going to be dangerous. Thank you, Sasha. That's great. Um, I'd like to turn now to... Oh, yep. And, of course... <laughs> Thank you. Now to also for the same question. Can we allow for multiple perspectives yet still call out falsehoods and lies? Also, thank you. Yes, so uh, I absolutely think we can if we do it right. So let me start by connecting a little bit with this comments here, because I think what was good about the talk about different perspectives was precisely that it was a way to get more knowledge, to get more uh, truths, as it were. Um, so take the, the, the classic case of you know, how we describe our history. So if you describe history just from the perspective of the rulers or from white men and so on, you're going to, get, um, you're going to miss out on a lot of knowledge. You're going to not have knowledge about what it was like for the women, and for the children, and for, for the sick, and so on. Uh, so the point of adding perspectives there is to add more knowledge. Um, and uh, that's something we, we have this, we always have a selection problem. We can't describe everything that happened in history. Uh, so we make some selection. And there's always a very big danger that our selection is very skewed by our politics or by our backgrounds and so on. And then all this talk, other people coming into the academy, all this talk about bringing in other perspectives is really, really helpful. And we should remember that. So that does, that's not in itself saying there is no truth, right? But it's just a way of saying that we need to do this to get to the truth, to get to a richer picture of reality. That's really important. Um, so that said, I think um, there are, of course, situations where you have incompatible perspectives on the same thing, on the same statement, as it were, where we, we have in contemporary world, we have, I'm talking factual statements like whether vaccines uh, cause autism and climate change, whether that's caused by carbon dioxide emissions and so on. When you have those sort of clashes, um, obviously they can both be right. Obviously, I say, but <laughs> as an analytic philosopher, I think clearly they can both be right. Truth is a property of this statement uh, that it has or doesn't have. And so one person is going to be wrong there. It's still useful, of course, up to a point, to have different perspectives. Why? Because different perspectives force us to sharpen our arguments, to engage with possible bias and uh, errors that we make. Uh, it's the idea of the good debate, of the good seminar, where even though it's pretty clear that one person has the better arguments, let's, let's sharpen them, let's, ch let's, ch let's check that we haven't made a, ma a mistake, an error. And we know, I mean, there's some nice um, research showing, indeed, that when people, when it comes to confirmation bias, for example, which is this tendency we, have, we all have to confirm our own views, we're really, really bad at getting past confirmation bias when we do it alone. But when we engage in dialogue with other people so that have slightly different perspectives that are willing to question us, we very quickly can get past our confirmation bias. So different perspectives can be useful, even though we are in a situation where we can't all be right. Just one more thing. Of course, one thing when people talk about different perspectives, which is also very legitimate, is that we're talking about people's experiences. And of, you know, we have different experiences of the same thing. And even when my experiences are not actually kind of corresponding to what happened, it's important to bring out what I did experience, because maybe I got very scared or very upset, tried to understand my perspective. That's also legitimate. Has nothing to do with truth, <laughs> but uh, because, uh, except that, of course, there are truths about my experiences that can be very important to understand me and to understand the dynamics of what's going on. So that's also one sense in which it's perfectly fine to talk about different perspectives without losing sight of truth and knowledge. So yeah. Thank you, also. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. 
or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.